Hi there, I'm Elva Gellingard, and today we are gonna react at some English accents, and you're also gonna know how our accent is. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, today's video is about how we speak English in Denmark, and I've mixed it with a video by English with Lucy. Sorry about this. I'm sorry about my phone. Um, so she has been compared with both. British English, Australian English, and, and of course, American English. And they got so many different words, and we also use some of them. And all of you in the USA might believe that we use all of your words in this entire country. You're wrong. We've used many different words that you do not know about. So, let's move on to the first clip. One. In the US, these are chips. 100% just chips. I can't believe you started with this one. These are chips. We call these crisps. Crisps. Okay, uh, for us, it is chips as well. Um, crisps is something like that I've only heard some few people say here in Denmark. That's because they only wanted to use the British accent. But... I can say the reason why we call them chips is actually just they look, they exactly look, just look like a little, little, a really little technical chip. That's the reason. That's just why. So we just move on to the next one. Chips. <laughs> so in the US, the cold version is chips. And in the UK, the hot version is chips. Let's see what Vanessa has to say about this. What does she call them? These are French fries. I know that they're not really French, but we still call them French fries. Or you can just say fries by themselves. The next one's chips as well, right? They're hot chips. Hot chips! Oh my God. <laughs> hot chips. Australians just call everything chips then. <laughs> it is worth noting that if you go to England and you order fries or French fries, we know exactly what you mean. Okay. Ooh, that's interesting. We did not say any of these words we just call them fries nothing else fries is more easier for us to understand what you are saying french fries is oh we might believe then then they are french it has been designed in france anyways we just need to move to on to the next one we call these cookies or chocolate chip cookies specifically okay they are biscuits um, don't really hear people saying cookie. Yes, two against one. These for us are biscuits as well. Um, I think we might call them cookies as well in Denmark. The ones with, with the chocolate chip. With. Um, it's just because, uh, cookies for us is only with them with the chocolate chips. And let me think. Oh yeah, I think the rest of them might be a little cake for us. Little cake. So, uh, mostly because they are really more like cakes and it tastes like cakes. Some of them, some of them, not all of them, but we just call them little cakes. That's also what we translate from, from Danish to English. So, that's just an extra word we have in Denmark. So let's move on to the next one and see what else there is. I have the proof that my answer is the most correct because you can see my two-year-old son is obsessed with trucks. We have so many truck books. Let me read to you. What truck do you need? A tractor trailer. <laughs> <laughs> so this is also what I would call it, a tractor trailer. I might call it a semi. All right, that yellow thing is a truck. So Vanessa thinks it's a tractor trailer and she's very, very sure about it. In all of these books, <laughs> they call it a tractor trailer. So we're gonna go with that one. That really tickled me. Emma thinks it's a truck. In the UK, we would call this a lorry, a lorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, those for us are trucks as well. 
Uh, I've never heard some people in USA call them tractor trailer. Tractor trailer for us might be a tractor that is pulling a gi giant tra trailer with them. Um, I've only heard them saying trucks. So America have a. I've only heard America say trucks. Nothing else. We call them trucks as well. Let's just move on to the next one. This next one. What have the women got up here? These girls all have bangs. We would definitely say fringe. Um, bangs is probably um, becoming more popular, especially colloquially. So in the UK, we definitely call this a fringe. And when I started hearing the word bangs in movies and things like that, I was really genuinely confused. Okay, what about... Um, I think we call them fringe as well. I've never heard some people say bangs on English. Um, bangs for us is more like, you know, poof, or boom, or kaboom. I think that is just what it is for us, or it's mostly only, it's mostly only on movies I hear it. And I was just like, what the heck is the bangs? Is it a fringe you mean? I was just like, dude. That's terrible. That's a terrible idea to say that. Let's just move on to this set. Next. Okay, what about this next one? This is candy. They are lollies. Lollies. <laughs> lollies. That is so cute. So in British English, these are sweets. Or sometimes if you're talking to a child, they might call them sweeties. Lollies for us are sweets on a stick. I must agree with Lucy there. Oh my god. Lollies sounds really cute. But we only use the word candy. Candy for us is mostly more easier for us to understand what you're asking about. If you're asking about for lollies or, or sweets, we do not we do not understand what you what you mean. Um sweet for us might we might believe that's a cake or a muffin. Or, or a cupcake. A uh, lollies for us is... You might mean a lollipop. That's a candy on a stick. Or a lolly on a stick. Or a sweet on a stick. Just to, just to make you all, all talk better understand what, we, what I'm talking about. Anyways, let's move on to the next one. This is a swimsuit. Some people might call it a bathing suit. You can also call this a one piece. Okay, this one's really funny. In Melbourne, where I'm from, it's really common to call them togs. But no one else in Australia really calls them togs. They call it swimmers. In Sydney, they call them cozies or costumes. Um, but generally, it's swimmers or bathers. Oh gosh, there's another one. Bathers or swimmers. <laughs> oh my word, I did not expect to receive so many different ways of saying swimming costume. <laughs> this for us is a swimming costume. We can also say one piece and we can also shorten it down to cozy. I remember my mum saying get your cozy on before my swimming lessons when I was a child but that's quite a, a childish. This is a swimsuit for us as well on American English. A swimsuit is more simple for us on English for us. Um, one piece is something we might be confused. We will just be like, what the heck do you talking about? I have no idea what the hell is uh, one piece is. If you, do you, and people will just, in their mind will just keep, just say like this. Dude, do you even speak English or what? What is it you mean? That's how we are on our English. Anyways, let's, let's just move on to the next one. This next one. This is the forest. Uh, that is definitely a forest. No, <laughs> it's the woods. Woods, plural. This is definitely the woods. I mean, in general, we say the woods. Forest implies a huge, huge area of trees, of woodland. 
The wood sounds kind of like something you might hear in an old-fashioned fairy tale. Yeah, well, Vanessa, sometimes life in England is like an old-fashioned fairy tale. I think a lot of Americans have this vision of England as a place with so much culture and history, <laughs> like a fairy tale, and then they come over and they are just so disappointed. <laughs> no! It's the forest! Just the forest! The woods for us sounds more like with many trees, but not like out in the wild life. Forest is more a simple word for us. Be, be careful using the word the woods. Most of us do not really understand what you're talking about. Only to the people in Denmark who only want to use the British accent. I know some people who actually just can do just like a British accent. And that's actually one of my friends I've heard that. He knows anything about England's accent so let's just move on to the next one and find out what it is what about this next one this is a bathroom you might say it's a restroom but it would be really unusual to call a place that actually has a bathtub a restroom usually we use the term restroom for public places that room is a bathroom yeah it's a bathroom okay so Vanessa touched on restroom and bathroom. Now we would never use the word restroom in British English. If we are in a public place and we are looking for a bathroom, we would say toilet. However, if there is a bath there, like a bathtub, then yes, we might say bathroom as well. But we would ask, where's the toilet? If you say, where's the toilet? Most people in the US would just say, uh, it's in the bathroom. I mean, she's not wrong. <laughs> the toilet is in the bathroom. There is also a slang word which I use a lot, which is the loo. Where's the loo? I went to the States for a business trip and I asked people where the loo was and they were utterly confused. The loo? What's the loo? <laughs> okay, I must go with Lucy again there. We call them bathroom and a toilet as well on the public side. Uh, we, we in Denmark and the rest of the Europe, if you only want to sp speak English, remember to ask us always, always I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you guys in America. Remember to always ask us where the toilet are. That's more simple for us. And Restroom sounds something more like that you can relax in, just like a, a bit or something else. Um, restroom is not the word we use here in Denmark. So let's just move on to the next one and forget about it. This is an apartment. This is mostly called an apartment, but we would never say flat. <laughs> okay, so in British English, this is a flat. We have a block of flats. I've lived in many flats in my life. We don't use the word. Why call it a flat? That sounds weird for us. It's the flat for us is more like a, a pancake. Uh, we might call them a, a apartment too. Uh, apartment for us is a meeting room. And I think we also call them a meeting room actually. Um, that's more easier for us to understand. Apartment or a meeting room where everybody else is gathering to get around or together. Just as I said before. Sorry about how I speak right now. Um, I'm a little bit warm in here or there is a little bit warm in here what I meant actually, not myself. Anyway, so let's just move on to the next one because Emma did get a bit confused, but she gave us all of the options. Good old Emma. This is a grocery store. I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking at in that image, but it could be a trolley, it could be an aisle, or it could be a supermarket. Hey, bingo, it's a supermarket for us as well. Or we call it the shops. I'm going to the supermarket, I'm going to the shops. The shops is more general, it could mean any type of shop. We would never say grocery store. We might, however, say grocers, the grocers. This is a shop that- Why call it a grocery store? 
uh, yeah, we call them supermarkets as well. It is also translated from Danish actually to a supermarket. Um, supermarket, supermarket is actually really close to be on a Danish word. You know how we are saying su supermarket on Danish is actually just like supermarket. So let's just do it. In, let's just doing it like this. Danish version supermarket and English version supermarket. It's really close to be the same. We call it the shops as well. Well, also if there's many places where you can buy anything. So let's just move on to the next one. All right, next one. This is a comforter. Oh my God, how weird is the word comforter? That's weird. Um, in Australia, that's called a doona. <laughs> I love that Emma is saying that the word comforter is weird. And then she goes to say that in Australia, it's a doona. That's weirder, Emma. <laughs> So in British English, this is a duvet, a duvet, which apparently Vanessa finds weird. See, we all find each other weird. I didn't know what a duvet was. Maybe I'm very sheltered, <laughs> but I didn't know what a duvet was until I visited Europe. We just do not have those in the U. I think we might call them duvets as well. Duvets. Um, Comfort is getting me confused. I think it also will get other people who's confused. I think we use the word duvet if it is about this, this one here you're talking about on a bed. Oh, ow, my arm. Well, anyways, let's just move on to the next one. Well, there's going to be a lot of conflict about this next one. These are bell peppers. Okay, they're capsicums, red, green, yellow capsicums. No, they're just plain old peppers. Red peppers, green peppers, and yellow peppers. Capsicum, what? This isn't Latin, this is English. Why the heck call them capsicums? It's just peppers. I'm going with Lucy again. It's just peppers. Red pepper, red peppers, green peppers, and yellow peppers. It's, it's not capsicums. Dude, that sounds terrible. That sounds like something from a candy or a lolly or a sweet. Let's just move on to the next one. Okay, another one that's gonna cause a bit of conflict. These are rain boots. And also the jacket that goes with it is a raincoat or a rain jacket. I guess in the US we like really clear, straightforward uh, names for items like this, rain boots. What's it for? It's for the rain. It's very clear. Boots for the rain. I mean, she's not wrong, is she? American English is sometimes more simplified than British English, and this is no bad thing, really. Let's see what Emma has to say. Um, when it's muddy and rainy, um, I would put my gum boots on to walk around in the wet. Yeah, I mean, we would we never say gumboots. I think I've heard my grandma say it, so it might be quite an old fashioned thing. Uh, in British English, we say wellies or welly boots. Are you ready for this next? I think we might call them rain boots as well. I've never heard some people say gum boots. We also we also call them just boots, just boots. Um, two different words or Actually, same words, just with just boots and rain boots. Anyways, just forget about it and let's just move on to the next one. Yeah, these are flip-flops, Emma. What do you call them? When we go to the beach in Australia, we wear our thongs. Our thongs. It's plural and we're talking about the shoes on our feet. They're our thongs. So I have to explain to you what thongs, what a thong is in British English and American English. A thong is like a g-string. It's a, a type of underwear where there is just one string at the back um, instead of more fabric. If Emma said to me, can I borrow some thongs? I would probably lend her some, <laughs> but I'd be a bit concerned. Okay, next. What? 
Why call them thugs? They're just flip-flops. Flip-flops. Nothing else. There have also been written a Danish song about it. It's... I gotta say, that's really weird. Um, I think it was to make fun of that word. Because on Danish, we just call them clip clapper And... Yeah. On English, flip, flip flop. Um, flip flops on English for us uh, is almost the same. But flip flops, some of the day, some of the Danish people have that has actually been written a Danish song about it. He just made it for make fun of that word. Anyway, so let's just move on to the next one. This is a gas station where you put gas into your car. So when I fill up my car, I fill it up at the petrol station. Good. I'm with Emma again on this one. She's redeeming herself after the thong situation. <laughs> yes, we also call this a petrol station. The fuel that we put into our car is petrol. I spent much of my childhood confused, but I was especially confused by the fact that Americans put gas into their car. Because I thought, well, petrol's a liquid. <laughs> Turns out it's just short for gasoline. Now the next one's quite interesting. Oh, that's a bit, a little bit of challenge there. Um, I think most of us would call that a gas station. Just like what Vanessa says. You fill up with your car with gas, but actually you just fill up with fuel. So, but yeah, it more makes sense actually for us. So we move on to the next one. Now the next one's quite interesting. I want to know what they call a shop that only sells alcohol. And this is interesting because in America, their attitude towards alcohol is slightly different. We're very open, maybe too open to alcohol in the UK and Australia, but alcohol is more controlled by the government and the states in the United States. This is an ABC store, which I just learned because I just looked it up. It stands for Alcohol Beverage Controlled State. So this is a store that sells only alcohol. And that last word state is because it is run by the state or run by the government. Now let's see what Emma calls it because I have heard that Australians have some fun names for places like these. When I go and get a bottle of wine, I go to the bottle shop, which in Australia we also call the bottle -o. bottle -o, love it. It would sound so stupid in a British accent. I'm just going to the bottle -o. do you need anything? <laughs> Oslo. Yeah, it only works really when you pronounce your T's as D. Bodlo. In British English, we call this an off license. An off license. All right, Emma's right there. Oh, sorry. Um, there we go. Or no. Ah, damn it. There we go. Um, Emma's. No, sorry. Uh, Lucy's right. This is quite interesting. I think we might call them an alcohol shop where they only sell alcohol drinks. So let's just move on to the next one. It doesn't it doesn't make sense of the other ones for us. We just will move on to the next one. And I feel like I'm going to get ganged up on here. <laughs> These are pants. 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 Old people might call them trousers. Well, excuse me, I must be very old then because these are hands down trousers. They are trousers. We do use the word pants to refer to underpants. Oh, because they go under your pants. Yeah, maybe they are right. <laughs> My whole life has been a lie. Underpants, because they go under your pants. Ooh, under trousers. Doesn't work, does it? Well, anyway, these are trousers and I'm not old, Emma, yet. <laughs> Now, um, I think we might call them pants as well. Uh, pants for us is, is more making sense for us. And we also call them underpants, what we got under below our, or right inside in our, our pants or trousers. So, um, trousers for us is, sounds more like than, I don't know what it sounds like, but, 
we just move on to the next one. This is a sidewalk. The concrete beside the road where people walk in Australia is called a footpath. Interesting. We don't say either of these. We say pavement. Pavement. Now, we would never say sidewalk. We do say footpath, but a footpath is normally not beside a road. A pavement is just beside a road and a footpath is any. Um, I think that says pavement for us too. Some, some people call them a sidewalk. Uh, I think we might, mo I think most of us call them a pavement or a sidewalk. So we can, so we can use both words, pavement and sidewalk. So we are going to the last one. Let's hear about that. This is a highway, or you could call it an interstate. A highway, or maybe a freeway in Australia. Ooh, we don't say either of these either. We never say highway in, um, in British English. Interstate, well, we don't have states, so that doesn't work either. Freeway, no. Freeway sounds dangerous. It sounds like you can do whatever you want. You're just free to drive. Um, that's a highway for us as well. But to make it more easier for us to understand, we have an extra word for it. A motorway. That's a, that's also what it translates from Danish to English. A motorway. Because you use the motor really much, po its power. And it's going to speed up. So that's going to be a lot easier for us. But if you did imagine with Lucy there. She didn't say anything. So we so what does England call them? We never know. Alright. That was the last week. That was the last clip for today. Oh by the way, it's my birthday today. The 27th May Oh sorry, uh no sorry. Uh the, it is the 27th May 2022 today and I'm getting 15 years. 15 years and I also want to thank you all for 300 subscribers and no more like 400 almost 400 I promise you so I'm gonna end the video for now and now you know how we how we speak English in Denmark so see you next time